guys, it's your old pal Tony Joel's TG here, welcoming you back once again into the record room. Now it's kind of a, a grey day here in the UK. Maybe I'm a poet and don't know it, but I'm not going to let the weather get me down because I've got a ton of great stuff to share with you on this episode, episode eight. And I'm going to I'm going to kick things off and uh, go kind of funky to start with. And my first pick, this actually came my way uh, thanks to our good friend Skojo. He had sent me a, a YouTube link to this artist's latest offering, and I really loved it. It was soulful, melodious, and just had some. It really reminded me of like uh, mid to late seventies soul. Al Green, Barry White, but the, the instrumental stuff. And I started going down the rabbit hole, as you do when you hear something great and new. And I discovered that I was actually familiar with this artist, but didn't actually realize it at the time. You see, the artist in question is L. Michael's Affair, and the album I'm going to talk about is Enter the 37th Chamber. Now that might sound familiar to you because you may be familiar with an album called Enter the 36 Chambers, which is of course the debut album from the incredible Wu-Tang Clan. And essentially what this record is, is instrumental covers of Wu-Tang Clan songs done in a, a soulful, not jazzy per se, but like, uh, like, like it sounds like 70s soul music. Like if you got, you know, kind of back in the day when you get those Isaac Hayes records, you can just put them on, there'd be these long instrumental tracks. That's kind of what Earth Enter the 37th Chamber is. Now, the reason I knew about this is from the Guy Ritchie film, The Gentleman, weirdly enough. Uh, I was watching the film a little while ago, and there's a scene in the film where Charlie Hunnam's character is chasing somebody through a housing estate. And during that trace, there's this really incredible instrumental version of the ODB track Shimmy Shimmy Ya. And at the time I was like, oh man, that's really good. But I, I didn't kind of Shazam the track or anything. I just put it in the back of my mind and thought one day I'm gonna, I'm gonna look that up. And then I got the album, I started listening to it. And I was like, this is great. You know, it's got the really good selection of uh, Wu-Tang Clan songs, Julie the Eye Mike's Cream, Mystery of Checks Boxing, um, Uzi, Bring the Ruckus, Protect Your Neck. And then lo and behold, the track before the outro is the Shimmy Shimmy Ya cover I had heard from the film, The Gentleman. So I was already really happy with this, really happy with this album. It's so good and kicks in all the right places. The horns, the horn stabs on this, the bass, everything. L. Michael's Affair are a seriously, seriously incredible band. And if you're looking for something a little bit different, also something a little bit familiar, might I suggest checking out L. Michael's Affair, Enter the 37th Chamber. And this, I believe, is their first album. There is another Wu-Tang Clan inspired album, and I think another one after that as well. So this is a reissue of the album. I didn't get it. I didn't get an original copy, but it, it's available now um, fairly cheaply. I think I paid under £20 for this, which, uh, you know, is, is a great price. And the album itself comes on trans red vinyl, you know, it's very simple, but it sounds great. And as far as I'm concerned, what more can you ask for? You know, you want something simple. You want something that's going to sound great and enter the 37th chamber does. If you're curious about L. Michael's Affair, you can, of course, check them out on all DSPs. I believe the albums are streaming everywhere. So uh, run, do not walk and get you some L. Michael's Affair. Now, as I said, I'm going to keep it funky to start off episode eight of the record room. And today, the day of recording this is actually the 7th of June, which would have been Prince's birthday uh, if the, the man, the legend was still with us. And as you'll know from previous episodes of the record room, I'm a huge Prince fan. Always have been, always will be. And I do like to play Prince on his birthday or on the day he passed or just any day that really ends in why. I don't need a reason or an excuse to listen to Prince, but uh, I do have a new Prince record in the collection and uh, I'm going to share it with you. But when this record first came out, this is part of the ongoing reissue campaign. And originally this wasn't even a, a real release up until last year's record store day. Uh, and the record I'm going to talk about is the Versace experience. And 
Originally, the album, if you can call it that, it's more of a sampler, was curated by Prince, featuring upcoming tracks from his next album, The Gold Experience. And these were given away at a Versace fashion show. I don't remember exactly how many copies of the original cassette there were, but it was very limited and an original real copy sells for insane amounts of money, like price prohibitive, unless you kind of are mega rich. Well, last year for Record Store Day, the cassette was reissued to the general public. And unfortunately, I didn't actually manage to track down a copy of the cassette, but I know I can find one. There, there are plenty of copies online. I'm not too fussed about that. But then a little while later, the album was announced to be released on vinyl, which is... I think it's kind of an odd choice because like I said, this really is a sampler for the gold experience. So there's no real complete tracks here. So if you're not really a print diehard, I'm gonna say it's not gonna be for everybody. In fact, when I was buying this record, I was looking at some of the comments that people had left and they were giving it kind of one star saying, this isn't even a complete album. Why would anybody want this? And it's like, well, if you don't know what it is, don't buy it, it's really that simple. This really is kind of only something for Prince diehards or for people who want something a little bit different, kind of the closest thing we have to a Prince mixtape. And the album came out and I was so excited. Yes, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have the Versace experience and it's gonna sound great, uh, you know, for the first time. And I went to the record store to pick it up, but it's a single disc LP and it was $34.99. Now, I'm not opposed to spending good money on records whatsoever. If it's a new release, old release, rare, I don't mind. But $34.99 for essentially an album sampler, that just didn't sit right with me. So I didn't bite the bullet there. I just figured maybe when I'm feeling a little bit more flush, I'll grab it then. Not, you know, I, I can wait. I've waited this long to have a decent sounding copy. I can wait a little bit longer. But then the other day I was cruising around online and Prince's, uh, the back catalog, the estate of Prince have just reissued three brand new albums to vinyl, uh, which I'll probably cover on a later episode, so I won't go into them here. But while I was looking in the Prince section, I noticed that the Versace experience was now really, really cheap in price. And I will say this, I did buy this on Amazon. And as much as I am, um, a fan of and support independent retail, sometimes money is an option and I'm not made of money. So if I can save some, I will. And I finally picked it up on vinyl and I saved myself almost 20 pounds by buying it on Amazon. The album was 17 pounds on Amazon and it's exactly the same as the one that I saw in retail stores. So, you know, I know some people are against the big blue brand and for most things, I am too. I do try and buy as many records as I can from independent retailers, but when I can save 20 pounds, that's essentially buying another record, which for me, you know, I'm going to do that. But I love this. I genuinely love this. I've always loved this. And now having it on, uh, you know, a new pressing, a new vinyl pressing is, is just absolutely amazing. The tracks on here, some of you will be familiar if you are a fan of Prince or if you know the Gold Experience album. But what's cool is on the back cover, they have listed where all the tracks come from. So if you hear something on here, if you decide to check this out and you hear something and you like it, but you know, you want to hear more, you can go to the album it's actually on. And what's cool about this is I don't know if it's coming across on the screen, but the album cover has a matte finish, but the love sign is actually uh, has a spot varnish finish. So I think that's really nice. It's, it's a nice, nice little touch. And with most of the Prince reissues that we're getting these days, it does come on the purple vinyl I've come to know and love so well. So here you go, let's turn that around the right way. And again, I don't know how much of this you will be able to pick up on the screen, but I'm getting all kinds of black marbling and some white marbling going through this. It's absolutely stunning to look at. And this, like all the other Prince reissues we've had so far, it sounds fantastic. So not something that's going to be for everybody, but if you are a Prince fan, or if you're just curious, I definitely recommend the Versace experience. Changing tact 
ever so slightly now because I'm about to talk about a cassette release and this happens to be my favorite cassette release of the moment and is also the newest cassette addition to the record room. I hold in my hands a copy of the Isolation Tapes. Now I've taken it out of its uh, cassette shell because it's so new, I'm just getting shine and glare. But that's the cover, that's the J card right there. And what are the Isolation Tapes? I hear you cry. Well, Castles in Space puts out a call to musicians that are currently in the lockdown, like all of us are, to uh, write, record, uh, and basically produce a track between a set period of time and then those tracks will be submitted to go onto this compilation, the Isolation Tapes. And this compilation is actually a charity release going towards the Cavell Nurses Trust. So every copy of this that you purchase, be it cassette, CD or digital, the proceeds go to a good cause. And what's great about this is the release itself is fantastic. It's 27 tracks on one cassette. And I believe the digital version and the CD also include bonus material. Don't quote me on that. I know the digital version does. And I think the CD does as well, but I'm not 100% sure. See, I'm not, I'm not a CD guy. But the music on the isolation tapes, these are all names you'll be familiar with. And it's electronic music and it's fan Fantastic. The first track on the album is by my favorite lady, Hattie Cook. Uh, the track is called I Get By, and it's simply the best pop song I've heard in years. It's absolutely fantastic. The cassette itself comes on this really nice glitter shell, which, uh, you know, for somebody that likes black vinyl so much, I love weird cassette shells. So the uh, glitter effect doing lots of things for me. This first edition is now sold out. However, the response to the cassette was so popular that 100 more have been produced. And if you'd like to grab yourself a copy, of course, head on over to Castles in Space. I'm not quite sure what their website is, but you will find them on Twitter and you can uh, grab a copy of that cassette right now. So you get yourself a brand new cassette bursting with material and you get to help a good cause in the process. I mean, why would you not want to do that? Why would you not? Why? There is something for everybody on the isolation tapes. So uh, what are you waiting for? My next pick follows on nicely from the isolation tapes. There are enough tracks on there to kind of get your feet tapping, get your toes wiggling. Maybe you might want to uh, shuffle a little bit around your living room, record room, wherever you, wherever you like to, you know, cut a rug. There are some tracks on the isolation tapes that will definitely uh, have you feeling that way. And my next pick, this album, I think every track on there, bar maybe one, is, as far as I'm concerned, uh, a future dance floor smash hit, whatever, whatever the kids refer to as a, as a top song these days. And this also happens to be the number one album in the UK right now. It's the fastest selling album this year, I believe, um, by this artist. Or is it just the fastest selling album? It's either the fastest selling album or the fastest selling album by this artist. Either way, it sold a buttload of copies, over 50,000 physical copies, I believe. And this is the sixth album from Lady Gaga, Chromatica. Now, I know that I cover all genres on the record room. I'm not kind of prejudiced towards anything. A good song is a good song. You'll see me cover death metal, black metal, film scores, rap music, pop music, indie, whatever. I love Lady Gaga. I just do. I think she's a fantastic songwriter. I think she's a brilliant actress. I have seen her live. Her show is incredible. And I was really excited about the release of Chromatica. I thought the first single, um, Stupid Love, I thought it was kind of good. I preferred the opening part of the song. I thought that was a really good song or a good uh, intro. Um, and then I kind of I did like the song, but I didn't, you know, I wasn't, uh, it's not kind of what I was, I was expecting something a bit more. Second single from the song that was current, was you, was number one in the UK a week ago, uh, I think it's now number two, uh, is the track Rain On Me, which features uh, Ariana Grande. And that is just pure pop perfection. It's such a great catchy song. It's hard to listen to it and not just have a smile on your face. And the album itself is just packed full of great pop tunes. It's 
fantastic from start to finish. Um, not a fantastically long album. Gets in, gets out, does the job. Uh, what have we got here? There's 16 tracks, but there are some interludes. So there's maybe, I don't know, 13 actual songs, 12 songs, something like that. Um, it's a single LP, and as you can see, it is pretty bare bones. The album itself comes in... This, my one gripe with this album is the plastic sleeve this comes in is super thin and already at the bottom I can feel where this will split in time if I don't actually switch the uh, cover out and I have already done that but for the, for the sake of authenticity I'm showing you how it arrives. The record itself, this is the standard retail version, comes on this, uh, I believe it's sold as Milky Clear. So yeah, I mean that's exactly what it is. The album, I think there are, now there may be three or four. I know there's this version, there is a picture disc version, and there may be one or two other of the kind of trans colours. Uh, I know there are, I think there are four cassette releases as well with uh, different coloured shells. And you get the album and a printed, this is kind of like liner paper. It's not double-sided, it's one-sided and it has the, uh, it's not the lyrics, it's the songwriting credits for the album. So if you want to sing along, you're just gonna have to listen to the album quite a lot or, or Google the lyrics. But as far as uh, pop albums go, I honestly think it's gonna take something really incredible to knock Chromatica off being my favorite pop record of the year. I know it's only June, an early June, but this is getting daily listens. You know, I'm sitting around the breakfast table in the morning. I'm, I'm throwing Chromatica on. It's just setting me up for a, for a good time. So if you're a Lady Gaga fan, you've probably already got the album. If you're curious, though, do check it out. Because I tell you now, you will enjoy it. You may not think you will, but you will enjoy it. Hard to believe we're coming to the end of another episode already, but fret not because the party will continue because as of this episode, The Record Room is getting its own podcast. That's right, we're starting a brand new tier over on Patreon where you can hear sounds from The Record Room, an accompanying podcast to every episode of The Record Room from this point out. So if you've enjoyed the records I've talked about on this episode, you can go over and you can listen to select tracks and also hear some more of my thoughts about each one. So if that sounds like a fun idea, make sure you head on over to our Patreon. And remember, it's only a dollar to subscribe to the actual show, The Record Room. But for $5 per month, you get two episodes and two podcasts, as well as all of our bonus content. You get to take part in viewer polls, reach out to me directly. And, you know, I, I'm always throwing other stuff up on the Patreon as well. So it's definitely the place to be if you're enjoying the show. And if, of course, you're watching this over on YouTube, why not give us a thumbs up and hit that big subscribe button. And remember, we are also on the social media. That's right, you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and now TikTok, which I'm not entirely sure what it is uh, because I'm old, but we are there. So you can find us at Record Room Show on all four platforms, I believe. So uh, follow us, give us a like, whatever the, the kids do today. I'm going to finish up this episode with one of my all-time favorite soundtracks. Uh, and I say all-time favorite soundtracks, and that is definitely true, but I, I have a new version of one of my all-time favorite soundtracks. And I'm at that point in my collected life where I spoke about it before, the record room isn't getting any bigger. So I have to kind of be a little bit conscious of what's coming in and also what's going out. And to that end, I've been thinning the herd, but I've also been rebuying things or buying things that I would want. So there's a good chance that certain albums that you think might be in my collection aren't, but I'll have five different versions of another album. And there are some people out there that think, uh, and I know because I've spoken to them, well, why would you want more than one version of each album? And it's a valid argument. You know, if they all sound the same, why would you want more? But my argument back is they don't all sound the same and they don't all look the same. And that's the important thing. For me, it's about the artwork and the packaging and how it's presented. And if it's different enough and it's eye-catching to me, then I'm going to be all over that because I, I like 
different striking color, uh, different striking images, packages, and sometimes the vinyl color will have an effect. Not all the time, but sometimes. And that's basically how I got a new version of the record I'm about to show you, because I, I saw this, I didn't even know it existed. Uh, I could have done some research and found out, but I just it never came up. But when I saw it, I knew I had to have it. And so the record I am talking about is the Maniac soundtrack by Jay Chataway. Incredible film, absolutely incredible film, uh, Joe Spinell, Amazing performance. Uh, Caroline Monroe, fantastic. I love Bill Lustig's Maniac. I think it's uh, a fantastic film. It's way sadder than just being a regular horror film. There's a great remake with Elijah Wood, but the, the original, the original I think is a, is just perfection. I really do. And I know there's a 4K Blu-ray out there, which, uh, which I will be grabbing a copy of. And if you are a fan, if you know the Maniac School, you're probably used to this cover. This is the key art from the film, and it's made its way to the album cover. And I think it, it's fantastic. It's, it's brilliant, it's very startling and very eye-catching, and it's got that great Varese back cover as well, which who doesn't love an 80s Varese back cover? Who, who doesn't indeed? Absolutely fantastic. You may be familiar with that version, or maybe you're familiar with the Death Waltz reissue from, when was this, 2016, something like that? This was version was available for the first time at uh, MondoCon, and I actually picked this up when I was at MondoCon, so I can't remember when that was, 2015, 2016. Um, this version was available at MondoCon first, and then did go on sale, and that one came on this pretty cool blue splatter which uh, which is cool and this version is also remastered as well for those of you out there that are looking to snag a copy uh, and not spend a ton of money you can grab this death waltz version now uh, fairly cheaply um, around 20 pounds something like that and i know there is a few other versions i know there is the mondo version mondo number one was uh, a reissue of the maniac score and uh, i did actually own a copy of that but uh, but i sold it on to my buddy nick hey nick um, because I, I just didn't see the need to have it. I wasn't a huge fan of the artwork and I already had the original, so yeah, there you go. But this version, I saw this the other day and I thought, that's different, that's odd. I like it, gotta have it. And so this version, this is the Italian Cinevox pressing of Jay Chataway's Maniac. Now, I'm sure you can tell by looking at the sleeve, it is not in the best of conditions, my friends. There are, there's some ring wear, there are some creases, there is some bends, there is numerous places where the back, oh, sorry, the black has now faded to uh, the gray, but it's just startling. And I had no real clue that there was an Italian pressing of this on Cinevox. So that's the front, and look at that back cover. Look at that. If I was going to reissue this record, I'd reissue this version. It's absolutely superb. And I managed to see this on uh, eBay of all places. And I will say now, I did not pay a lot for it. And after I found it, I went onto Discogs to try and get some more information about it. And uh, there were none for sale at the time. And the last copies that I had sold, had sold for pretty good money. So I feel like I had a good bargain there. The seller was very honest and said that he essentially hadn't played the record, so he wasn't sure, he was a record dealer, he wasn't sure how it would sound. Um, so I got it, cleaned it up as best as I could, and it's okay, it doesn't sound bad. A few pops and clicks, but with a little more cleaning, I'm pretty sure I can get this thing sounding as though, you know, it were factory fresh. And there you go comes with the uh, Cinevox green label, which I believe, was it green they used for all of their first presses or was that Beats? I don't know, but this is the only Cinevox version there is, so maybe the album didn't do very well. But uh, yeah, I'd never seen this. So once I saw it, I had to have it and made sure I did. So uh, there you go, Maniac on Cinevox.
Say you didn't so, but we've come to the end of another episode of The Record Room. So as per usual, thank you for joining me. Thank you for all of our patrons out there. For those of you that are subscribing on YouTube, I am tremendously, tremendously grateful to each and every one of you out there. Remember, if you'd like to hear more from The Record Room, you can pledge on Patreon and hear the sounds from The Record Room podcast. But until we meet again, stay gold, spin those blackest circles, and remember to always wash your hands. <laughs>